Good morning. This is Bob Fry. Uh, we're coming to you from our home, 9 a.m., uh, Sunday morning of May the 16th. And we're thankful for the opportunity to come into your home from ours. Uh, God is doing some great things, and he's giving us uh, such a good opportunity in the social uh, medium platforms. And we have great help with uh, Matt Wooten and, and Jared Kamala. And, and uh, God is really blessing and has really got the word out here in the last year uh, since we decided to go full time. And uh, we're thankful for it. Uh, doors are opening up. Uh, we've got a lot of content now on YouTube and uh, and uh, on robertfryministries.org. And uh, we would invite you to look at all of those things. And more things are opening up all the time. Books are being uh, written now. And uh, that God is blessing. But we've been talking in the last uh, in the last couple of weeks about location, location, location. Where am I at? Uh, how did I get to this place? Uh, uh, have I taken any wrong turns or detours? Have I always sought godly advice? Have there been some times where I've messed up? What about my failures and my successes? And uh, how do we do it? We talked last week about establishing a bigger perspective, letting God establish high points um, in your life. Today, we're going to talk about dwelling in the atmosphere uh, that we function in and how does that affect us on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's some incredible things, but, but before we go into that, let's just see if we can get a perspective on what's going on in heaven. You know, John was on the Isle of Patmos uh, in the book of Revelation, and uh, the Holy Spirit began to speak to him of concerning the things of the last days. And, uh, uh, and these are the days now that we are living in. And uh, so he gave us not only a, a perspective of what had ha transpired, what was going on presently in his world, among the seven churches in his region, but also what was coming after those things. And, uh, but he gave us a picture of what's going on in heaven right now, four and 20 elders representing the uh, uh, Old Testament and New Testament body of believers, casting their crowns, saying, worthy is the lamb, multitudes and multitudes in a company of angels, uh, praising God. Uh, uh, the, 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 the room, the throne was filled with glory. There was incredible, incredible singing. Uh, John saw all of that. And in, 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 in uh, Revelation 8, let's go to there and let's look at something that's just piqued my interest when, uh, when I, the Lord showed me this. And it said, when he opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven for about a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Now we're talking about something that's going to be happening, happening within the great tribulation. But, but what is happening there still is a reflection of what is always going on when it concerning prayer. And it says that another angel, and here we go, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar, and he was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden officer, altar, which was before the throne. Imagine this is going on in the throne room of heaven right now. And um, it says, and the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. John gives us a description of a spiritual transaction taking place before the throne of God. It reveals the how and the why that worship among believers um, on the earth is so relevant uh, he saw the trumpeters. He saw an angel with a censer in his hand offering incense of fire um, that, that was symbolic of the prayers of the saints that filled the throne of God with a fragrant smoke. And um, prayer causes great delight in the presence of God. Almighty incense is used as symbolic of the aroma of faith in the petitions that we ask of God. It says over in, in Psalm 141, there's an incredible 
um, scripture over there. In Psalm 141, verses 1, Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set forth before you as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. It says in in Hebrews 4, in uh, verse 14, seeing then we have a high priest who has passed into the heavens, happening right now. And Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was at all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And let us therefore come boldly to this throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You see, petitions uh, get answer and there's a fragrance that comes into the nostrils of God as people respond to his word and his presence with adoration and faith. The throne of God smells good. It smells good and the aroma of his presence smells good. Every aspect of mercy and of grace Every answer to prayer manifests the aroma of the attention and the kindness that he shows toward us in Christ Jesus. God is on the throne, and it's sweet to him to see that we respond to him in faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And he that comes to God must first believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that uh, uh, call upon him, diligently seek him. But there is another picture going on that involves aroma. And in verse uh, chapter 9 of Revelation, just the next chapter, John saw the other side. In verse 1, the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. Now, this wasn't happening in the uh, in uh, the Great Tribulation. This 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 being fell eons ago, before uh, Adam was even created. Uh, this thing fell uh, out of heaven. Uh, with a third of the angels uh, that he had led in rebellion. It says, to him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of that pit. There is a fragrance and smoke that comes out and arises out of the depths of hell and only brings a stench of destruction, deception, and darkness. It's what heaven smells like all the time. The throne room of God smells good, and everything out of hell smells bad. I want to tell you a little story. Back in 1984, we were pastoring a church in Dresden, Ohio, We had enough money to take a mini vacation. We left right after church and drove on the way down to Myrtle Beach. We had our little Malibu Chevy. We had uh, Aaron as a seven-year-old in the the back along with his little brother, uh, Mike, a three-year-old. We had the uh, turtle shell on the top of the car with all of our beach gear and stuff, but we'd never been to a beach before. We've never been to Myrtle Beach before, but somebody had given us directions, and this was way before... Um, uh, uh, GPS and everything, so we had everybody's uh, in in uh, uh, in input as to what was the best shortcut and how long it was going to take. And we were leaving at three in the afternoon, and we were going to drive all night because we didn't have any money to stay an extra night. And then we were going to get in there and find a hotel. It was going to be a three day whirlwind type thing, and but we were excited. And uh, so we're going down the highway on Route 77, leaving Columbus and on down toward that. And we land into Charleston, West Virginia. And I'm from West Virginia, and I love that state. And uh, right in the middle of that city, there's a big river called the Kanawha River, and it parallels I-77. And uh, you pass these big chemical plants. DuPont and all of those things, several large industrial plants. And you can see along 
parallel along the river, there are the, the big places for the barges to be, and there's steel girders, and, and there's big railroad tracks, and there's smokestacks, and everything looks like any other industrial type of city. Buildings, there's schools, you can see it all, playgrounds, baseball fields, the Bob Evans, uh, holiday inns, uh, soccer fields, everything's going along good, but we needed gas, and we needed to get on, and... Uh, and we didn't see the exit or the, the on-ramp to get back on. So after we got into the gas station, I rolled down the window and I asked this person, how do we get back on? And immediately, the atmosphere of that place just came right in through our air-conditioned car. And uh, this was way before there was more regulations for smog and pollution and things. And that place, it was filled so much with that pollution that it stung our eyes. And we were asking for directions, and the person was very polite. He knew that we weren't from around here. And uh, I could have told him, man, this place smells bad. And we just weren't used to it. And, and he'd say, what smell? And, and we could say, there's air cleaner somewhere else. You know, and he'd say, uh, uh, I wouldn't know. This is my home. The people that are there all the time, they get so used to what they're breathing in that they're not aware that there's another breath of air uh, somewhere else. They become accustomed. We lived on a two-lane highway that was a truck route, 35 feet from a major truck route in, uh, for 30 years outside of New Albany, Ohio. You, you heard trucks blow through there every day and all night long. But we got so used to the noise of that that we could sleep like babies. Now that we live out in the country uh, where there's no cars or anything, uh, we have to have sound on to go to sleep because the silence is so deafening. We got used to those kinds of things. Our surroundings, the people we associate with, the words, even the music that we promote, uh, or we permit ourselves to listen to, the books that we read, the, th the programs that we watch, the addiction that we have to our phones and, and all of those things are shaping our lives. They are influencing our homes. They can even dictate our destinies. I challenge you who have kids, go into the room and see what's on the walls and that'll give you an idea of what's influencing your, your children, your young people. Go look at the paintings on the walls uh, out in there and you'll see what people want to want to listen to or what they want to like. Um, what kind of air today are you breathing? Over in Ephesians, in uh, the message, I thought this was really good. Uh, in um, verse 1, it says, It wasn't so long ago that you were mired in the old stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief, then exhaled disobedience. We did it, all of us, doing what we felt like doing, when we felt like doing it, all of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with the whole lot of us. Instead, immense in mercy and with incredible love, he embraced us. And he took us uh, uh, from a sin-dead life and made us alive in Christ. He did this on his own with no help from us. Then he picked us up and sent us down in the highest heaven in the company of Jesus. You see, you can breathe in a lot of things that will spit out the, the, the smoke of, uh, of ungodliness and, and an ungodward world, but God can change all that because of his mercy. Your physical world is dictated in the climate of your spiritual world. We've read about Lot in his days. There was, there was uh, marrying, giving in marriage, building, selling, planting, reaping, all of those things until the day that Lot was taken out of, out of Sodom. Uh, we find over in, in um, 2 Peter uh, chapter 2 in, um, in verse 5, we can, we can look at this. It, it says, says over there that um, uh, uh, in verse 6 that God 
turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an destruction, making a, uh, them an example to those which afterwards should live ungodly, and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day in seeing and hearing their deeds, but God knows how to deliver the godly, the, un, the godly out of the temptations and reserve the unjust to uh, uh, punishment for the day of destruction. You see, you see, a lot just didn't get the picture until it was almost too late, and and but he didn't consider the 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 stench of the spiritual activity going on in Sodom. You know, when it rained down fire and brimstone, actually, that there were tar pits around that place, and they, when, when God caused those tar pits to actually erupt, that stuff blew up into the air and then covered the whole place with that sulfur and gaseous smoke came right out of hell and, and defeated um, uh, those cities and uh, some of the cities around them. Jesus said that there is a spiritual climate uh, over in, in Luke 21, in verse 35, that there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars uh, uh, in, in verse 25. Uh, on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, uh, uh, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear of the things coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. And it says, and they'll see the Son of Man coming when the clouds of with great glory, and when these things begin to look up, he said, uh, lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. Take heed, in verse 34, to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing and drunkenness and cares of this life that that day come upon you unaware, for it will come upon you as a snare upon all of those who dwell on the face of the earth. But watch therefore and pray always. Let the incense of your prayers come up before God and make a fragrance there that you may be able to escape all of those things that come to pass and stand before the sons of men. We're in a position right now where there's a tipping point coming. And God is going to take his people out. I want to be the people, the person that gets caught up with what's going to catch me up. I'm looking forward to that day. And by, the Bible says that when we are alive and remain, we'll be caught up together with them in the clouds and be wherever with the Lord. So we're, so we're comfort one another um, with these words. Jesus said in John, the 17th, the 17th chapter, uh, he said over here, and this was in his um, high priestly prayer in, in Gethsemane as he's interceding. He said in verse 13, but now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. He's praying for our joy. It's his joy he's given. I don't pray that you would take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am uh, not of the world. In verse 18, as you sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. These things I speak, Jesus said, in the middle of the chaos and the stench, of what's going on in the corruption and the, the debauchery that is in our present culture. Jesus said this, my joy is going to remain. I will impart, I will insulate, I will empower, and I will commission. You see, God's giving you a breath of air. He's going to give you the, the kind of lungs that breathe the breath of God. And you're going to rise up and you're going to find a place to say no to those things that you think may be invading your location. Stay, number one, in the word of God. And let that, that word be dwelling in you. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you will and it will be done unto you. Psalm 119 and verse 130 says, the entrance of thy word giveth light and gives understanding 
to the simple. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, nor stands in the path of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in that law he meditates day and night. He'll be like that tree that is planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth fruit in his due season, and his leaf won't wither, and his whatsoever he does will prosper. That doesn't look like to me anybody that's being invaded by the smoke of of the darkness. That's somebody that's living by the right rivers of, of God Almighty. Walk in the Spirit and God will bless you. You sow to the Spirit, you'll reap of the Spirit life everlasting. Don't uh, be unequally yoked into uh, uh, with unbelievers in your contracts in business. Uh, we've always told when we were youth pastors, don't date the Canaanites. Don't missionary date. Find people of like faith to hook in with and, and to establish marriage with. Um, worship at God's throne and invite his presence into your life on a daily bless, uh, basis. We smell like Jesus, like the woman that poured the alabaster box on him uh, uh, full of aroma. And it says that he, the fragrance filled the house. She smelled just like Jesus too. Practice his presence. I'm going to leave you with a scripture in 2 Corinthians 2 in verse 14. It says, In the Messiah... In Christ, God leads us from place to place into one perpetual victory parade. Through us, he brings knowledge of Christ everywhere we go. People breathe in the exquisite fragrance. Because of Christ, we give off a sweet scent rising to God, which is recognized by those on the way of salvation. Boy, is that a, is that a clean air scripture or what? That's better than science. Now we're in on everything. God wants to us to draw the line and say, we're not living like the world lives. We're not going to be dictated by what the smoke of hell thinks. We're going on. We breathe clean air in our location. If you are a person today that uh, needs prayer, we want to pray with you. You can reach us right here on Facebook. You can private message us. If you get on and you're a friend of mine, you can find in my about, you can find my phone number uh, there. and You can call me. We spend our time uh, uh, answering prayers and praying and agreeing with people after these messages are over. You can reach us on robertfryministries.org. There's a giving page if you would like to contribute. It enables us to do more things as we go forward in Jesus' name. Until next time, God bless you. We'll see you again, hopefully next Sunday. God's going to do great things this week in your life.